First of all, uh, just uh, a scary picture uh, here on the screen. Uh, it's the structure of the calcium isolate. I just wanted you to have a, a clear idea of what it is. Um, calcium pedolate is obtained by uh, a chemical synthesis. Uh, we start from uh, glutamic acid uh, and we obtain a pedolic acid. Uh, with a reaction uh, with a calcium salt, uh, we reach to uh, make two pedolic acid holding one calcium. That's calcium pedolate. Calcium pedolate is the salt of calcium. Uh, it will have an impact on calcium problematic. But um, keep in mind that it's only 13% of calcium. So uh, it brings calcium, but it will definitely have another action that just uh, bring calcium. The other part is a uh, proteic form, uh, which is uh, the pedolic part, and it's 86% of, of the product. We will see that uh, the, most of the action comes from this, uh, this pedolic structure. So to have a good uh, calcium absorption, you need a calcium disponibility uh, in the intestinal uh, part. You need also a good ionization, that's this availability. Uh, you will have passive entrance uh, to the, the intestinal cell. You will work on osmotic uh, regulation, that's a passive entrance. Then you will need an active transport to bring calcium from the entrance of the intestinal cell to uh, the part close to the exit. And you will need, again, an active movement to bring the calcium from the inside of the intestinal cell uh, to blood. So a passive entrance, an active transport, and an active empty. empty. Okay? We will see that uh, it's really important to understand the, the behavior of the calcium pedolate. Here you have the three modes of action of uh, calcium pedolate. I will start with uh, the action of its calcium, even if it's a small part, but it's uh, the easiest one to, to explain. Uh, calcium, the calcium from calcium pedolate have uh, a particularity. This particularity is uh, its independence to pH variation in question of ionization and uh, disponibility, availability. So that means that even when the pH is getting higher, uh, you will still maintain the same availability, the same ionization of, uh, of the calcium you are bringing through the calcium pillar. That means that you, that you are increasing the availability at, uh, in, the, in, the, in the intestinal cell. Now, the two other modes of actions are due to the, the 86 other percent of the molecule, which are pedolate. When you introduce pedolate, you generate uh, an higher quantity, an higher availability of arginine and proline. Pedolate is a precursor of the synthesis of arginine and proline. What does that mean? Uh, the, the higher availability of arginine helps to have uh, a higher quantity of a protein called calcium binding protein. This calcium binding protein is the main binder of calcium in the intestinal cell. So you need it to bring calcium from the entrance of the intestinal cell to the blood. That's the active transport. And this protein has uh, quite an interesting particularity. Uh, it's composed of 28% of arginine. That's really, really high for one protein to have more than a quarter of its constitution made of one amino acid. So that was happening here. So 28% of arginine compose uh, this calcium binding protein. That means that if you have a lack of arginine in the intestinal cell, when the animal needs it, you won't be able to synthesize the binder, the main binder of calcium. So you will have a problem of uh, transport of calcium. You will keep uh, a flow of calcium until the osmotic uh, regulation between outside and inside. When you will reach this level, then you won't have any calcium assimilation anymore. Okay? So more arginine means more calcium binding protein, which means an uh, intensive, more intensive transport. This transport is not calcium dependent. That means that you will transport the calcium from calcium pedolate, but also all the other sources of calcium available at this moment. Okay.
last action of uh, the calcium phytolate, uh, its effect on uh, arginine and proline availability um, have an, a second effect because arginine and proline uh, enters in the constitution of the collagen. So you have a short uh, picture of collagen, which is something that's uh, liquidated. And arginine and proline makes a bridge. It keeps the structure of collagen good. So uh, if you have more arginine and proline availability, you will have a better constitution of the bone collagen. And obviously, when you've got the collagen as a bone, you will be able to deposit more calcium around this collagen. The effect we will talk about today on X is an indirect effect of this action of bones. If you have good bone deposition, and that's what we are trying to do on pullets, if you have a good bone deposition or a good bone regeneration, then uh, you will have more calcium availability, but also more arginine availability for the internal membrane of the egg. Then you will have a better egg shell quality. Okay? More collagen for the membrane, more calcium for uh, the egg shell, so you have a better resistance of, of your eggshell. To summarize the action of pedolate, more availability, more transport, and more bone capacity for mobilization, demobilization of, uh, of calcium. I will fi finish on that slide, and I think it's a, a good transition to uh, let you talk about your own experience now. Uh, it's just what we try to summarize as a, a feeding program for pedolate distribution. Uh, today we won't tell you you have to put calcium pedolates all the time on all the animals. Uh, on some periods it's useful, on some other ones it won't be useful. So the idea uh, today of use of calcium pedolate is a distribution during the first days of life of the pullet because here you will have a better deposition of the skeletal structure on a young animal. So distribution between uh, 0 to 28 days. And then you can do a second application two weeks before entering on, uh, on the laying period. This second distribution on pullets have uh, a focused uh, objective, which is trying to uh, work on the medullar bone to have the better laying capacity at the end of laying. Okay? When we try to work on the oops, on laying, uh, on laying hands, uh, we will only work when the dungraded eggs start to be a problem, when they start increasing, and then we will work at the end of, of laying, around, starting around uh, week 50, 55, 60, in function of the cases. Uh, here the objective will be to collect more eggs. The layers, uh, the hands is not doing more eggs, but we will better valorize the eggs that uh, it is doing. The objective is to try to move eggs which were not collected to downgraded eggs and source downgraded eggs to eggs of high quality. So you need to see this effect on the laying period as a translation, a progressive translation from one category of eggs to another one. And we are going in, a, in the way of a better quality. Okay? Here we, we indicate the protocol for broilers we treat the bones from zero day one, sorry, to 21, with uh, an objective oriented around the, the deposition of bones. So the idea here is the same we are trying to work on on pullets, have a better bone deposition, a better skeleton deposition, that help us to have an animal which have less uh, problems of mobility at the end of fattening. It's too big and it's stuck on its leg. It can walk, it can, uh, the animal is able to keep uh, eating, and if it keeps eating, it keeps growing. So here you need to see the pedolite application as an invasion to help your animal at the end of fattening uh, to keep eating and growing, okay? That's what I wanted to, to give you as, a, as an introduction uh, about the main application of the product. I think that uh, here in the room we have some people who have quite a few uh, years of experience to illustrate uh, what we indicate here. Uh, and uh, I think it's better if they comment their own experience from, uh, from the home most in, instead of doing it myself.